<laughs> well, let's do some recognitions. recognitions. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Zuckerman. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's a wonderful evening uh, that we have today. <clears throat> we have, as, as Dr. Waters mentioned, we have two uh, wonderful things that we're going to be uh, celebrating this evening. One is the recognition, recognition of the um, grant recipients for the 2013 fall cycle, which we'll get to momentarily. But before we get to that, we have the unveiling of the um, updated Lawrence High School Library. And I would be remiss if I did not identify the thanks to not only the LTEF for the, the $46,000 that was presented to the Lawrence Township Board of Education. This was, this grant was part of last winter cycle, the, the winter cycle for the 2012-2013 school year. And it's just now come to, uh, it's come to its completion. Um, the grant was actually written by Karina Gonzalez, who is the, the Lawrence High School uh, Library Media Specialist, who's in the back right over there. As well as by Allison Fisher, who's the Lawrence High School, one of the Lawrence High School assistant principals. Unfortunately, she cannot be here. She is on her way back from, from China. And I think that That's, we'll, we'll get, get to, to that, get to that uh, a little bit later. And also a special thank you to, uh, to Stephen Prentice, who really helped kind of coordinate everything, keep everything going, who is the, the grants manager for the district as well. So with, with that, if I think we're going to have a ribbon cutting ceremony to officially gr open the, the, the site. Don't Fix your voice, by the way. And you are here. the ribbon? <laughs> I ask for your assistance. Come on. Okay. I don't know. I have to run through it. Figure it out. I'm dragging it. High school kids. Where's our high school principal? Who's going to cut it? I got five. I got six. They're big. They're the biggest ones I could find. Oh, <laughs> again. I'm a little short. Okay. <laughs> um, like I said the last time I was up here, thank you. Thank you so much. I knew that when we did things like this that other schools would be jealous, and they are. <laughs> other librarians have been contacting me because I've been keeping them apprised of the changes we've been making, and um, they weren't able to be here today, but I've told them what we've done, and they are jealous. <laughs> they wish that they could be here. I actually couldn't come to school today because my daughter was sick. And I was nervous about not being able to be here today of all days because of what was happening. So I think I emailed about seven people to try to have them put all the pieces together. And just like I expected, they all pulled through. And that's what I love about this district. <laughs> you know, no matter what happens, if you need help or you need something, they're just, they're always there for you. I'm in a district that supports public libraries and school libraries. I'm with colleagues that get it and are always there for us. And I couldn't do this without you guys. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm back. <laughs> um, let me tell you some of the things that we did. So the first thing we did is we wish I had a wireless so I can point. Um, we lowered the shelves by about 25%. The reason why we did this is because reluctant readers are intimidated by tall shelves. There's a direct proportion between the assumption that the taller the shelf, the harder the book, and it scares them away. It's also a supervision issue. And in addition, by lowering the shelves and making the tops a sort of a light cream, it has 
reflected all the light and illuminated the space. In addition, we did a lot of tech changes. That screen used to be over there. And it was actually a bit of a light issue because the sun would come through those windows and completely white it out. So we moved it to there, solved that issue, and it opened up the space better for classroom instruction. In addition, we installed a ceiling-mounted projector, which is completely wired. So again, makes instruction a snap in this area. In the well, we also put in a smart projector, which turns that whiteboard into an interactive smart board which is fantastic. Right now we can accommodate five classes at the same time in the Library Media Center, which is just amazing. Um, in addition, we had 23 desktops, hardwired desktops. We got rid of all of them in favor of being completely mobile. So before about 23 students can be on computers at the same time, now almost 60 can half of which are state-of-the-art Chromebooks, and the other half are Windows machines. So if they need to use Office, or they need to print, or they want to do something online, they can do both at the same time. We also installed this lovely custom-designed um, juice bar. The students are sad that it's not actual juice. I'm thinking of changing the name to Power Bar, but we'll see. I still want to keep it punny. Um, the juice bar is also hardwired. There's these little discs, power spheres that are on top of the tables that the students can directly plug in. And we also wired some of the tables that are in the back, and they actually have USB ports. So if they have a device that has a USB jack as opposed to a traditional plug, they can still wire in. So we are ready for BYOD or anything that comes down the pike. We also updated our furniture. We reupholstered all of our soft seating, which hopefully you find more comfortable. We replaced the cushions Thank you. for you. We also have a new piece called a two-position chair. I observed that the students like to rock back on their chairs all the time, um, which isn't always the safest choice. So I learned about a, a piece called a two-position chair, which allows you to actually rock back and forth without uh, any worries about structural integrity or anything like that. So did I miss anything? Oh, yes, the televisions. Uh, we, we updated all of, all of the tech that we have hanging here. So this one here and this one down there, that one was repurposed. So now we have two flat screen HDTVs. And they are wired in with the school channels. So whenever we have the announcements for the day, they're wired in through there as well. Can we hit them all? Yeah. And that's just Amazing. the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we, we certainly appreciate um, Karina's enthusiasm and obviously drive to be able to make this the, the most productive space that possible to be able to maximize its capabilities. And we also once again thank LTEF for their continued support and, and opportunities to be able to provide experiences like this for our students uh, for, for many years to come. Um, I'd now like to uh, turn it over to the presentation for the fall grants um, from LTEF. As Somebody is tweeting to me. Um, but now, with that, we're, I'm going to introduce uh, Paul Schindel, who has laryngitis. So please be gentle. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, Paul. I, I do indeed have laryngitis, so I'm going to speak as little as I can, which may be a challenge for me anyway. Um, but it's a real pleasure to be here tonight. When Between the library, um, and this is phase one of the intended two-phase library improvement. Um, so everybody's invited back a year from now to see what phase two looks like. Um, in the meantime, between phase one and $51,000 of grants that we're about to uh, present this evening, we're talking about a $100,000 night, which is thanks to countless people in the community who have donated to LTEF organizations in the community, um, foundations near and far, um, businesses including uh, in particular we'd be remiss not if we didn't mention ETS and uh, the Lawrenceville School which are our, our lead donors, um, a lot of uh, faculty and staff who support LTEF all the way up and down. Um, it, it's not the work of LTEF as much as that of of all the people in the community who support LTEF that makes this kind of thing possible. So thanks to one and all here and there um, for supporting LTEF. I'm going to um, 
introduce uh, some of our uh, board members who will in turn call up uh, grant recipients and uh, present them with, uh, with the grants and explain what each one is about. So, um, uh, Jen Polskowski is, is first up. She, uh, we're really pleased to have her here because she used to be there on your side. Of the table. Yeah, it's interesting me on this side. <laughs> and uh, we're here. pleased to have her on our on our board now. So, do I have my go good side? Ahead. Make sure I look at Steven. <laughs> okay, the first one I'd like to call up Kevin Duncan. Kevin submitted grading genius writers with author Dan Gutman, and it's going to be an author in residency for third grades with popular children's author David Gutman. Yay. Dan Gutman. Yeah. Next up, we have uh, Cherie Rosser from Ben Franklin as well. iPad minis and prolong to go for nonverbal children at Ben Franklin. This tool will to assist nonverbal children to help facilitate early language simulation. Mm. Not here. Yeah. In Cherie's place, we have Chris uh, Turnbull, Principal Turnbull. Accepting oh. for Cherie Rosser. <laughs> Next up, we have Terry Kuzlak, Cindy Zargarski, Joe, Joe Frex, Kim Coyle from Ben Franklin. Kindergarten, sowing the seeds of learning. Hands-on gardening experience for kindergarten students. Come up, ladies. Kim Coyle used to babysit for my kid. Aww. She was a great babysitter. She's a great teacher now. <laughs> Even with laryngitis, still has the commentary. Yep. <laughs> One more. Next, we have up Nooks for Special Education ESL ELL students. Beth Hopkins, Karina Carvalho, Liz, Leah, sorry, excuse me, Leah Yurzar, Dana Pess from Ben Franklin Elementary School. This will be reading devices to assist students with vocabulary and reading comprehension skills. I'd now like to introduce um, an exiting LTF board member. Um, <clears throat> after, after Jen, who went from your side to our side, Pepper Evans is going from our side to your side. Um, <laughs> we share a nice to watch. And, and so this, uh, this, I suppose, is the swan song of her uh, presentations from this side of the podium. Uh, she's been a wonderful and very active and very progressive president of LTEF for, uh, for two years plus, and, um, and a board member for eight or nine years altogether, and we will miss her very much, and you guys are the beneficiaries of, of her exit. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, welcome to the podium now. Dave Boggs wrote a grant, It's Okay to Hustle. Pedometers to record physical activity to help promote a healthy lifestyle. Dave from LIS. <laughs> Any Dave in a storm. <laughs> oh, good. Also from Lawrence Intermediate, LIS Intramural Lacrosse, $310. Uh, Daniel Brennan, Lacrosse Equipment for Extracurricular Student Club. Uh, 
Andrea Patokny, again, Lawrence Intermediate, increasing student engagement by using iPads in the ESL classroom, technology to engage and motivate students as they strive to master the English language. Marcy Bird, Lawrence Intermediate, Smart Speech and Language, Smart Board to help facilitate the development of language and speech skills of students. I can introduce myself. So my name is Linda Nowicki, and I've been a board member for about three years now. I'd like to welcome up Emily Steiner, Lawrence Intermediate School, for linking the motion and design and mixtures and solution units with the Liberty Science Center Sportacular Program. This is assemblies for fourth and fifth grade students. Next up is Kathleen Patron, Dan Brennan, Brian Bolt, Gabrielle Casari, Jessica Haller, Lawrence Intermediate School for the summer reading for rising fifth graders. This is leveled novels for rising fifth graders to read over the summer. Next, we have Elizabeth Mayo, Karen Klieger, Judy Bushelow from the Lawrence Intermediate School for the Sensory Lending Library. This is to purchase sensory equipment for students with behavioral or physical challenges. And next we have Allison Kirshner, Sharon Rello, Meredith Loden, Lawrence Intermediate School, Smart Music. This is technology and subscriptions to improve the skills of music. And Project Voice Performance and Workshop goes to Mindy Malofsky and Petrina Pappas, Lawrence Middle School. This program to perform and teach spoken word poetry. Hi, I'm Ivy Cohen. I'm the executive director of the Education Foundation. We skipped one, so I don't know who's running the slides, but we can go back one. Um, to Meg Leventhal at Lawrence Intermediate School, her grant was titled Set Me Free. It's a teacher tool for teaching interactive lessons using the smart board. Um, next we have uh, Melissa Clark and Jennifer Skarupa from Lawrence Middle School, an arts festival at LMS. It's a school event for students of various disciplines, including the arts, literature, video, and technology. Melissa and Jen. And Lonnie. And Lonnie. We forgot Lonnie. This is for you guys. 
Um, this is from the students at Lawrence and Ring, Lawrence Middle School thanking you for the grants that you granted. Oh. Wow. So thank you. Smart people. That's, <laughs> <laughs> Aww, <laughs> Aww. That's sweet. That's <laughs> all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Open the cards, get your drink. I mean, the refrigerator. Don't go far. Um, our next grant uh, is to, again, to Jennifer Skarupa at Lawrence Middle School, Reading and Writing Our Way Through Art History. It's a classroom set of Scholastic Art magazines. Hi, I'm Carol Katz Connolly. I'm a member of the board. Uh, and this next grant is for creating a culture of reading, bringing literacy home. Grant writers Mary Ellen Wallauer and Lisa Kapp from Slackwood Elementary School. It's a summer reading program for all Slackwood <laughs> school students. Next grant is Classic Literature with a Twist. It's illustrated novels and audio CDs of classic literature to encourage reluctant readers. And the writers were Mary Szilagyi and Stacey Zagas and Michelle Ross, all from Lawrence High. Nathan Jones and Tim Collins from Lawrence High School wrote a grant for track and field improvements, which will um, make improvements to the shot put circle for student athlete use both at LHS and LMS. And finally, is a grant written by Jill Vaughn and Ani Herzog at Lawrence High School for the New Jersey Model Congress. Um, it provides registration fees for 45 students to participate in the program. For the visual learners, we've brought some of the returning seniors, including Victor Krapfin, who rose to the level of party whip after we had been part of the program for only a couple weeks. Not bad. I think that wraps it up for us, except that I, I really should have mentioned that it's about $100,000 and about $38 um, on top of that, which is in the form of inviting everybody to enjoy the uh, refreshments <laughs> that we brought in honor of the uh, ribbon cutting for the library. So that's for everyone to enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. the grant recipients, uh, while everybody else is partaking in the refreshments, the grant recipients to go down to the well just for a, uh, a big overall picture. Yeah, we, we have this one more check. Now they've gotten their checks, now, now you get the, the real deal. You get the dough. Mm -hmm. <laughs>